Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achena. Welcome to episode four of Network Chat Programming. First of all, if you haven't watched the GitHub tutorials, there is a link in the description to a playlist which contains three tutorials. It might not have three yet because I've only made two so far, but it will have three in the future. Might have three already, I'm not sure. It depends when I upload this video. But uh, check that out because that'll teach you how to use GitHub and how to, you know, leave comments and all of that good stuff that you should, I, rec I highly recommend you check them out. Um, but anyway, today we're going to actually talk about making these fields do something. So if we check out our design here, or if, or if we even uh, open the actual application, which I'll do in a minute, once this loads. Come on, pass it already. Brah. Okay. So that's what our application looks like. If we hit the debug button, we'll see it right over here, which is awesome. Um, and, you know, we can do our name, blah, blah, blah. And the point is, when we hit login, um, the idea is to log in. So we're going to talk about how to actually extract data out of these text fields and how to, um, well, how to log in, essentially. We're not going to actually cover that yet because that'll take a while. But we will talk about how to extract data from these fields, how to convert them into variables uh, when we hit the login button, okay? So the first thing we should do is probably talk about listeners. What is an action listener? Now, I think we talked about this before, in fact, yeah, we would have, because in 3D game programming, uh, we actually did, um, we actually did make a form for the configuration, and we, yeah, yeah, we did make a form for the, um, configure, for, for the options, so that you could, like, set your resolution and whatever. Um, so we're going to do a similar thing, and obviously if you haven't seen that, well, not everyone has seen that, so yeah. But, um, we'll talk about that right now. So what is a listener? An action listener is essentially just a way to listen for if an action is performed on a particular component in our window, and if it is, we can handle that. So um, an the best example is probably when we click a button, right? An action has occurred towards that button. That button's action performed is when we click on it, right? Um, for text fields, for example, there's a, there's a vast array of things you can handle. For example, if we type a letter, if we remove a letter, blah, blah, blah. If you actually right-click on any component here and had an, add an event handler, you can see all of the different um, the, uh, actions or events you can handle, such as, uh, you know, the carrot updates. The carrot is obviously the blinky thing when you type so that you know where you're typing. Um, you know, focus, when it gains focus or loses focus. Uh, input method position, whatever. There's so many things. Key when we when we press a key, when we release a key, when we type a key, when the mouse wheel is used. What basically the deal is, we can handle any of these things. So we can run our code if one of these things, if one of these events were to occur. So the idea is, when the user hits the login button, we want to handle that action by logging in. Okay. So let's right click on that. And this is the cool thing about Window Builder as well. We don't have to tap out the the code ourselves. If we right click on the login button. Uh, go to add event handler and then action and then action performed uh, let's just click on that and what you'll see in the code here is this little thing just appeared right this right here and basically what that does is just grabbing some water um, what what that does is you can see that there's an action performed uh, it, it's an, an it's an anonymous sub method here or sub um what is it actually called I don't know basically it's an anonymous uh, constructor and method. Um, what we can do here is let's just I like to change that to a just for no reason at all just because I don't like arg zero. Um, but uh, basically uh, it is a an in, I think action listener is an interface. Yep, it's an interface. This interface obviously has to implement a particular method, which is action performed. And what we've done is instead of actually going ahead, because we could have done this, right? We could have made a custom class called, uh, sorry, a custom class, just whatever. Actually, let me just explain this, because I don't think I have before, and a lot of people are interested in that. Let's just create a class called uh, login button, okay? And this is honestly a bit of a waste of code, because you don't have, because for this, for this example, it's useless. But what we can do here is, uh, with login button, we can implement, implements, uh, action listener, right? And obviously, once we do that, uh, we'll have to add the unimplemented methods, which, as you can see, is action performed, the method that appeared there, right? And once we've done that, what we can actually do is hit up, uh, let's just say, um, how would we do this? Uh, so private, for example, private login button uh, handle, let's call it handle, uh, equals new login button, 
all right? And then uh, instead of having this, all right, I'm just going to cut that. You can just put that in here. It's called handle, all right? And as you can see, that doesn't give us an error or anything because the thing is, this parameter has to accept an action listener, right? That's a class that is of type action listener, which it is since we've implemented it. And then over here, we could put our system.out.println um, button pressed. Yeah? And then if we run that code really quickly and hit the login button, you can see that over here in the console, uh, every time I press the button, the button pressed appears because that's what we've typed here. So that's basically what we're doing. Except instead of us going ahead and saying, let's write an entire class, we don't have to do that, okay? What we can do is instead just simply hit up a new action listener, and then, as you can see, it automatically appears here as an anonymous... Uh, God, I keep forgetting what it's called. Um, let's just quickly check it out. Anonymous inner type. There it is. So it's an anonymous inner type, which basically means that we're declaring the class as an anonymous class because we're not giving it any value. We're just simply declaring it for a single use, which is what we've done here. Okay? And then that saves us having an extra class here, which is probably a good idea because it's unnecessary. So let's delete that and let's uh, delete this as well. Okay? So that hopefully that uh, helped you guys actually realize what's going on here because it can be a bit confusing. Um, but yeah, and then obviously over here we can simply type our hello or whatever we want here. And if we run that, whenever we press the login button, you can see hello appears here. Okay? So that's how that works. Brilliant. Um, let's see, we're seven minutes in. Okay, <laughs> that's a lot. Um, okay, so let's actually cover a simple login command here. So since we know that whatever uh, runs here, uh, whatever happens, sorry, when we hit the button, whatever is in between these curly brackets is actually executed. Let's run a method called login, okay? And login will actually just log us in. So let's create the method login, create it as a private method. Um, it's actually gonna create it here, but we don't want it here. Let's create it over here in our, um, in the actual class, not inside the instance of action listener. Um, and over here, this is basically what's going to happen when we log in. So, in fact, I could just add a quick java.comment being like, uh, login stuff here, or whatever. Okay, so that when we mouse over here, it'll just happen. It'll just appear here, so just so you guys can see. In fact, I'm probably not going to do that, it's useless. But, um, I, don't, I really don't like adding comments unless I'm making some kind of API. That's just how I roll, unless it's just comments, like a to-do comment or whatever. Anyway, um... So what should happen, right? Once we hit the login button, what we basically want to do is extract data from fields and open a new window, which logs us, like logs us in. Hopefully, you know, if it works. So uh, that being said, uh, the fields that we want to extract uh, right right now are just basically text fields. So we have the text name, address, and port. That's actually perfect. That's all we want, right? So let's make uh, the best way to probably do this is to actually have the login take. Um, three parameters, so the, the string name, string address, and int port, okay? Um, and then over here we'll put uh, our fields here because we want to actually open a new uh, window here very soon which will actually pass these commands in, these variables. Okay, so let's talk about how we can actually extract these, right? So let's make a quick string here called name and that's going to actually take our um, our name from the text field directly. So uh, what do we call it? We called it text name. So over here let's put text name which is the our text field dot get text right and that'll just return the text as a string. Very simple. Um, so that's name. Uh, we're gonna do, we do it two more times for the address so text I think it's address, right? Dot get text, and finally, uh, since we want the port to be an integer, we actually have to pass that. So, um, text port dot get text, but we need to hit up integer dot pass int to convert it into a, an integer because it's a string originally. And then we can just hit up name, address, and port. Okay, and that will basically uh, pass them into this method here. Okay, so that's pretty simple. You should probably handle this and say, for example, 
if uh, tech support is not a number or if, or if it equals something, um, you know, let's handle that and we can do that later. We probably will do that later. But for now, we're just going to keep it really simple. Um, Okay, so now that we've passed it into here, let's do a few things. First of all, we want to op open a new window, and we'll talk about that next time. But um, we do want to open a new window, and we also want to close this window. I right? want to dispose of it. So you can simply type dispose, right? And that'll just basically get rid of the window. It won't close your application, obviously. It'll just get rid of that particular window. And let's also just print over here, just for fun, our name. Um, and our address and our port, okay? Just so we can see them here. So let's uh, just open it. Let's type the name to be the Cherno, address to be, let's just say, a local host, and the port to be 8192, since that's our example. Let's hit login. Our window disappears, and as you can see, our strings appear over here, and uh, our program actually terminates because there's nothing left for it to run since we've disposed of this window. Um, but yeah, the Cherno localhost 8192. Okay, so you can see all of our data here, and that's what we're going to use to actually log in in real in real life, I guess. But yeah, anyway, that's um, episode four. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.